Today we're working on something obviously a little different than what we normally work on, which is cars. Um, this is a 1999 Triumph Daytona 955i. I picked this up for fairly cheap. Uh, I think it'll be a decent flip, maybe put around with it for a little bit. Let me bring you guys in here. We'll go around this and I'll give you the story I got on this. So this bike has obviously been sitting quite a while. I know basically no history on this. The previous owner bought this also not running and he ran out of time or inclination to fix it. So passed it on to me. Supposedly it does not have spark. The previous owner replaced, I believe the crank sensor, rectifier, maybe the stator, I don't remember. I know those go bad in these things, but anyways, we're just gonna kind of ignore everything that he told us, not that it's wrong, but just for diagnosis, we'll come to our own conclusion. This is a 955cc three cylinder, so kind of a interesting engine. Overall, it's in pretty decent shape. I think it'll shine up pretty decent. There's some fairings that are cracked and stuff that we'll probably go through and fix, but overall the bike's in pretty good shape. Hopefully the engine's in good shape. Been off the road for, I wanna say three years, but it's not 2020 anymore. It's actually seven years, believe it or not. I can't. So obviously we're missing some stuff. We got a missing mirror over here on the right hand side. A couple broken pieces, nothing too crazy, but definitely stuff we'll need to go through and sort out. But I think first things first, let's start peeling away these fairings and kind of get a better picture of what's going on here. This thing's obviously been monkeyed with a lot. You got coolant hose off. I don't think it has any coolant in it. The side cover over here has been off. You can see there's bolts missing. I believe that's where the charging system and whatnot is not located, so that would make sense. This is a fuel-injected bike, so, and it's a British bike with British wiring, so that's gonna be interesting, no doubt, but that's enough yapping. Let's start pulling fairings off. Pretty good looking bike overall. Still got Manuals, got a little tool kit back here. Kind of neat, I guess. Probably all the stuff, the tension, the chain, all that good stuff. What we need in here, and I think for now we're gonna pull the fuel tank off. I don't know if it's actually connected right now, even. Okay, yes, it is, kind of. I believe our fuel line is off, so we'll just... Yeah, our fuel lines are out right here. There's all kinds of electrical stuff we're going to have to sort out. There's some gas in here. Let's take a look at the tank. did forget to show you the mileage. It's a little high mileage for a bike. 41,000 miles, but apparently these are pretty reliable engines, so... I don't know. I'm not really a motorcycle guy. A little too death trappy for me. Tank looks good, it's plastic, so obviously you don't have to fight rust or anything. The fuel doesn't smell, I mean it smells old and a little bit varnishy. You can't really see anything in there. But it's not terrible. I don't think we're gonna be fighting the tank too much, luckily, because I hate dealing with fuel tanks. I think everybody does. The battery's toast, I pulled it out and put it on the charger. No way it's coming back. One interesting thing on these is it does have an OD2 port. Kind of weird. And some mystery lines here. I don't know if these are fuel tank vents or what. Oh great. Somebody's been in this loom. Doesn't look like it's been totally taken apart though. Here's that connector. I don't know where that goes. This might be a connection to the fuel pump somewhere in the tank that was already unplugged. Here is one of our fuel lines and I think we got a return kicking around somewhere. Right here. So that's good. 
I don't know what this is hiding. Oh, I got a little alternator. Kind of funny. Okay, yeah, so. Interesting. I have no idea if that even holds. Maybe let's get this the side fairings off and we'll get a better look at everything. It's like it's quick release, so that's nice. Try to keep these in decent shape. Looks like we got our clutch cable here. Random clutch for connector disconnected and obviously the cover has been off and it's just loosely on there with a couple bolts. Okay. So I'm guessing this is the crank sensor that he replaced. Let me grab the bag of parts I was given. All right, I got all kinds of goodies in here. So we got what looks like a rectifier. Some brushes. Could have sworn there was an old crank sensor or something. Somewhere. But yeah, lots of miscellaneous hardware that we gotta figure out. I'm going to pull the fairing off the other side, and we'll get that lower one off, too. So here's a view over here. Here's our alternator. Uh, it looks like maybe missing a bolt and stuff. We're probably just going to have to go through this entire thing, charging system-wise. So as I'm looking at this, I believe these are coil on plug, so the spark is actually controlled by the ECM. ECU, whatever you want to call it. So I don't think any of the stator or charging system issues should affect spark. So I don't, I'm not entirely sure why all that was done. Maybe I'm misunderstanding how the system works, but I think we should pull the airbox out of our way so that we can get to the coils and then we'll pop them out and check for spark. Because I'm not, obviously this is in there good, so I don't even know entirely how they were checking for spark previously. Maybe they put it all back together, but it doesn't really look like it. So, let's get that out of our way. I'm not entirely sure how this attaches. Looks like we'll want to pull our axis here for the coolant off. May as well unplug this coolant temp sensor, it looks like. Super brutal. Okay, how about we deal with that later? I think it'll be easier when it's on the connector. Oh, get another one over here. So these are kind of loose, so maybe the box has been off, I don't know. I'm guessing this is filter access. Which we, there might be screws inside that hold it down to the throttle bodies. Just going in blind here, I have no idea even how it goes together on this bike. Yeah, it's been a little bit since this has been changed. My favorite. Does that give us access to anything? I don't think so. I don't think we needed to take that out. What's holding us in here? It might just pop right out, I don't know. Oh wait, here we go. Little bracket holding us on there. Put this back in for now. Yes. I do like to see that all the threads on this into the plastic are metal threaded inserts. A lot of times all this stuff is just like self tappers into plastic, so it's kind of a limited lifetime. But on the metal ones, the metal inserts like this, no big deal. So props on that. Like to see it. I also like the Torx. I feel like there would be a bracket on the front, maybe. It does feel like that too. But maybe not. Maybe it just slides in. This is your temp sensor, although there's one up front. Yeah, I think this would be your temp sensor. I don't know what this would be. 
Not entirely sure on that. Alright, air box out. The three throttle bodies and whatever this is. Oh, idle air control valve, I'm guessing. Definitely think it's been off before. You can see the springs. I think they should have stayed in the boots. A little bit of carbon buildup, nothing crazy in there. But here's what we were after. And yes, they appear to have been out at some point. There's, there's one bolt missing out of each of them, unless maybe they only run one bolt. And also these coils look like they've maybe been cleaned up. Or maybe it's just this one got dirty. I don't know. But let's pull the middle one out because it's easiest to get to. And maybe we'll put power to this. Crank it over. It has no oil in it, obviously, because that cover's loose. So we'll just crank over it for a very short period of time and check if we got spark. Real simple coil, just two terminal. I don't know, I think maybe they just ran one, one bolt in these. It is mildly concerning that these are loose, so maybe before we get too far into cranking the engine over, we ought to pull that side cover that's hardly held on and see if that gives us a look at what's going on in there. I don't know exactly how the alternator is driven. I don't think this is sealed up at all, even though it's RTV. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's wet under here, so I think it's been off. I didn't know if maybe he took the bolts out and just... who knows. Who knows? Maybe I'll look into a. Oh yeah, because we got our. I think we got our crank sensor here. So that's probably what he's getting after. Looks like we got our oil pressure sensor here. Is what I'm guessing that is. Or probably an idiot light. I don't think this has a pressure gauge. But maybe I'll look up a diagram real quick of how this all connects together just so I can get a, a mental picture. And then we'll probably end up pulling this cover off. It obviously needs resealed anyways, so. All right, so let's get this cover off. I am kind of confused. Why would it have a stator if it has a whole external alternator? I don't even know if it has a stator. I'm just going off things I've been told, which may or may not be wrong. Yeah, these are all loose, so. This cover's going to be resealed anyways. Hopefully all the oil's dripped out. So we got mud daubers that made a nest in there. Yeah, okay, no stator, like I thought. I don't know why there would be a stator. No real sludge to speak of which is good. Here's our crank sensor. A little bit of metal on there. Uh, so that's why this was off, obviously. The crank sensor was replaced. Now, I don't want to necessarily... Oh, great. Broken bolt here. That's super. Uh, I don't necessarily want to reseal it all yet because don't know for a fact that that crank sensor is good, even though it doesn't even look like it's been replaced. I thought I was told it was replaced, but we'll have to figure that out. And check our timing chain tension here, which feels really good. Nothing looks crazy messed up in here. I don't think it has a stator. I think it has that external alternator. I don't know what this bolt is for. That's loose. Maybe let's get you in there with a flashlight. See what we can see. What does that hold? Does it hold the starter motor? Maybe. Really don't know. Or right, that's a case bolt, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's a case bolt. So we're gonna be torquing that back up before we do anything. That's bizarre. Maybe they thought it held the alternator in and loosened it for some reason. Oh yeah, so I'll tighten that up. I think maybe what we do is we 
get a good battery, hook the battery up, and spin her over. Check for spark. If there's no spark, then we're gonna maybe attach a scope to our crank sensor, see if we're getting any kind of signal there, and go from there. Because the spark, the only thing that could stop it from happening basically is basically the route that the signal for the spark takes is it goes from this trigger, generates electrical potential as this passes past the magnet in the sensor. The ECM picks up that trigger. The ECM sends voltage to the coils and the coils make a spark. So either our ECM is bad, which is highly unlikely, crank sensor is bad, possible, or all of the coils are bad, which again, highly unlikely. Or maybe it was misdiagnosed from the start, which is why we're going to double check. All right, before I go grab any battery and stuff, let's pop one of the plugs out and see how they're looking. Huh, are they a different size? No way, they're 13 16 right? Way, they are. Unless it's not actually biting, and it's not actually 13 16 One thing I am noticing, there's the electrode is missing on that spark plug. Not the electro, the little screw on top piece. See what I mean? It's kind of weird. I don't think it's 13. But it also doesn't seem to be 5 8, which is weird. Unless it's just really loose. Yeah, what the heck? Some oddball size. I think it's 11 sixteenths. This is so weird. I've never even... I don't think I've ever seen a spark plug that's 11 sixteenths. I don't know what the metric equipment of that is. I forget. Or if there is one. Brand new. Obviously at some point, somebody threw spark plugs at it. Okay. Well, actually, I think we're going to actually take the... Uh, spark plugs out while we're spinning it over since there's no oil in it and that will help break our spark plug uh, cut down on the amount of stress that's put on the crank because you know there's always a little bit of residual oil film between the crank and crank bearings but since we're not pumping more oil we don't want pressure between the bearing itself and the crank otherwise we could start scoring stuff up. So just to crank it over and check spark, we'll take the plugs out. It'll help us make sure it's all free and clear also. All right, got a new battery, which is a good first step. Get our little nuts inside. There's little captive nuts that go in. I feel like I should have gotten the other style where they're on the other side so that the terminals would be right here, but this is the battery that was in it prior. So I figured this would be right. I think it'll work out fine. The sparkage, which is a good thing. Keys off. Okay, just snug those down. Probably should have sanded the bottom of these terminals, but it'll be okay. Alright, well let's uh turn the key on. See what if anything happens. Where it turned before. There it goes. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There we go. I don't know. Oh, it's a steering lock. Duh. Oh, that's kind of neat. It's got a, a pass switch that blinks the headlight. <laughs> Funny. Okay. So it's um, a horn. No work. Uh, let's see. Our check engine light should come on. And we turn the key. Bring you guys over here. So it looks like we are in neutral. Let's try putting the shifter down, yep. So. There we go. Turn the 
key off and on. And our check engine light should hit the light and it's not. So I'm guessing that is kind of the root of our problem. Okay, so it cranks. But I'm pretty sure that our uh, check engine light is supposed to come on with the computer on. Let me see if I can figure out how to turn off these headlights. Are they always on? Well, I guess number one, start checking fuses. I don't know what this bright red light under here is for. That does not appear stuck. <laughs> or if it is, it's weird. I think that's like underglow, yo. Maybe it's supposed to illuminate the gauges. I don't know. Is there really no way to turn the headlight off? Or am I just an idiot? I don't see one. Alright, let's get a test light, check these fuses. I just when I was taking the old battery off, there was a second connector on one of these, so maybe uh, that's what the deal is, is that we gotta connector that's tightened down below. So I'm just checking to make sure there's continuity or voltage on both sides of these fuses. That's probably the horn or something. There we go. Turn start on. That turns on. Okay, so all these fuses look good. I think these are spares. I don't think anything goes here. So that's not going to be our problem. Let's check for power at our OBD2 plug, which I believe should be this one. Or is it the purple? There we go. Okay, so we got power at the OBD2, but no check engine light. I believe that should come on, like cars do but I guess I could be wrong. So maybe let's pop our plugs out. We'll throw one in with the coil and check spark. Turn the key off so we don't kill our new battery. Which, man, those suckers are expensive. Look at these. Like a hundred bucks, same as the car battery, bitch, pretty much. Is there oil down there? I hear weird stuff. You guys can just barely see. It doesn't look like it. There's stuff in there, so maybe let's get the uh, air gun. Blow that out. No sense in dropping a bunch of junk down. Ooh, man, it's in the sun. It's hot. A little bit of water collected in there, it would appear, but it was all outside of the plug. No, let's get it so. Throw one of these in. I'll throw it in the middle one. And see what happens. Let me make sure I can. Make, make sure you guys can see, I mean. There we go. It should be decent enough. Yeah, nothing. But I don't think it's the electrical system. Well, I don't think it's the charging system like the. Last guy chased. At least I'm not suspect of that yet. Right now, I don't even think the engine management system is getting power. So, first things first. Like I was saying, when I took this apart, I could have sworn there was a second. Oh, it's right here. That could be part of a problem. Make sure the keys out. Oopsie. All right, found this hiding down in here. Another ground. So that could be the ECM ground for sure. Okay, now let's see what happens. Turn the key and hopefully that'll light up. Right down there. I don't know why are the hazards on. It seems like the hazards are on to me. Still no spark. I don't even know what the hazards are on this thing, honestly. Okay. That worked, I guess. 
So, still nothing on that. I have no idea. That might have been a body ground. Hopefully we didn't mess anything up by moving the rock. Okay, so still no parties. I think we need to start looking back here. So this 15 amp fuse is the fuse for the ECU, I believe. Um, and we have all these relays back here that we're going to double check. So let's get this fairing out of the way. Looks like it has been off, so I don't know which of these is which. But we'll just start by checking for corrosion. I'm guessing this is our main relay, which should switch the ECM on and off. One good thing is that for the most part, it looks like the wiring on this hasn't been too messed around with. That's always the worst, is when unknown things have been done and wiring harnesses are cut apart and disaster. Yeah. So no immediate corrosion or anything, which is good. Let's pop our ECM connector off. Just get a look at that. Probably should have disconnected the battery, but... Okay. Get our fuses out of the way. Well, I think the battery might need to come out to get enough room. But real quick, let's just flip the key back on. Reseating it did nothing. Sometimes when you have questionable contacts, reseating can improve a problem. Even if just temporarily. Yeah, I think this needs to swing up some more. Pop our battery out. Let's see if that gets us enough swing room. Found corrosion. Just gotta figure out how this thing comes off. There we go. Alright, let me pull you in here. Definitely not helping. That's not looking good either. It looks like a pin broke. Uh, that's gonna be fun to repair. You can see most of them are fine because most of them have grease on them. But it looks like those ones were missed at the factory or whatever. So you can see that pin is broken off. I don't have a pin out for this, so I don't know what those pins are for. But it's not really like there's redundant pins on these, so we're going to want to pull our ECM all the way out. Is it really just held in there with push pins? <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. So I think we need to just pry it out a little bit. Okay, well, the, the push pin definitely came out. It just broke, but. Weird way to hold stuff in, in my opinion. But, okay, over here we have a bolt. Should have noticed that before I started prying. But I think that push pin was going to break in either way. A little 8 millimeter, and there's a ground strap on here. I don't know how well you can see. Great, they have a, a nut on the back side. One more push pin to break, basically. I'm not convinced that it even fits up. I might even pull the whole battery box or something. I don't know if that's coming out. That is pretty eaten away, unfortunately. Look in there and see. Oh, I think it will. Just gotta do some paleontology. Alright. See if we can sneak this thing out without breaking it into a thousand pieces. Come on. Alrighty. Now. Does that give us enough room? For the ECM. Man, they shoved that in there, didn't they? Alright, after some finagling, here's our ECM. Now we can get a little bit of a better look. There's our broken pin. Some corrosion starting on some other pins, but... That one seems to have been the worst. Let's look inside of our 
other connector. You can see the remains of that one pin with everything else mostly looking okay. There's some corrosion starting. Definitely not the worst I've seen. So that's gonna kinda suck to fix. It's gonna really suck to fix, actually. I don't know if it is fixable. We'll see with the soldering iron what we can do. Uh, I, maybe I'm going to try to find a pin out for this and see even what pin that is. Who knows, maybe this whole thing could just be a red herring. And it's, a, it's another problem, but not the problem that's keeping it from starting. But hopefully not. So I'm going to dig up some info on this ECM and see what I can find out. So looking at the wiring diagram I was able to find, it would appear that this pin, pin 86, is the ground wire for the main power relay which powers the injectors, the ECM, everything. So, yeah, that makes sense. It's gonna be tricky to attempt a repair on this, but we'll uh, open this up and see. Worst case, we could do it real jank mode and run a wire. We could solder the wire inside of the ECM to where that pin connects, run it outside this cover, and then splice into the wire on the other side. So. We may end up doing that because I really don't like an ECU for this thing. And it's, it really wouldn't be that janky. It's not like this is hermetically sealed or anything. You can see this thing just pops right off. So, not a huge deal. Although I would like to try to repair this, but we'll see. So, let's get this on the bench. Actually, I might even just be able to do it in my lap. Like I said, this thing is not exactly Fort Knox. I mean, it was built by the French, after all. This is a Renault, or Sagam, which is a Renault engine management system, I believe. So you have the double whammy, you got French and British. All right, so actually it is sealed up a little bit better than I thought. But no matter what, we gotta, we gotta break into this. So let's get a pick and see if we can pull up this sealant. Looks like the sealant's actually pulling away here. All right, I take it back, this is sealed up pretty good. And yes, by repairing this, we are going to be affecting the integrity of the water resistance, but better than not running at all. You may be able to slide the whole thing out, but maybe I'm going to, I'm going to run a razor blade all around. Try to cut it out without breaking it too much. All right, so let's see what we can do. I'm going to get you on a stand. Stop the camera by accident, but this is the potting compound. It's just glued the board in. So I'm going to have to just keep digging out and be careful not to cut any traces or anything. So I'll bring you guys back once I got this all dug out. Really the proper repair here would be a new ECU, but we're not doing that. At least not at this point. So I'll bring you guys back once the excavation has gotten a little bit further. All right, so found a couple, well, four screws hidden, which is why it wouldn't just pop out. I may have damaged the board in one spot, but we can always repair it if we need to with wire bonding wire or whatever. Unless I really messed it up, in which case we'll be getting a new ECU. Yeah, this stuff is like, almost like what they make molds out of, that weird rubber. That may actually be what it is, I don't know. Most ECUs I've seen, they can formally coat the board, which is like a, I don't know, it's like a clear resin, I guess, maybe. And then they just put a rubber seal around the, the whole thing to encapsulate it. This works too, I guess. Bet you now it comes out. At least, oh no, we got even more screws. See, I should've just looked here. Live and learn. You just gotta really be careful not to cut into our board. Then we got a lot of traces to repair. All right, I'll bring you guys back once I got all these screws out. It was pretty dang hard. Um, it was glued down, first of all. And second of all, obviously we had all this potting compound. So if we ruin something, I'm not surprised and I'm not gonna cry about it. But if we could somehow revive this, then I'm all for it. 
I did take a chunk out of the board here. I'm hoping there's no traces over there. Usually it's not there aren't any traces running near the edge of the board. It's not really good practice, but you never know. I don't know. This is probably just a Yeah, you can see. Well, you can't see because it's not focusing. Maybe now you can see. You can see how there's a constant, I don't know, millimeter and a half, two millimeters, all the way around the board. I think we didn't go past that, so we may be okay there, but we'll see. I'm going to try to expose our pins here. I think what we're going to try to do is take the remaining pin here, try to shove it through so that it's the same length as the other ones, and then we'll solder a bond wire across. I did look. I don't think we cut into any traces or anything while we were going around prying, luckily, so. And if this doesn't work, there's always the jank way, which is always on the table. Well, I would like to make this work if possible. Of course, I make crappy flush cut pliers. Okay. So there's our pin. Let's first see if we can pull it out. No. Um, I believe it's kind of melted into there. Like it, the plastic's formed around the pins. I think. Could be wrong about that. Might take some effort. So. Okay. There's our pin. I guess let's shove it back in. See how far... Okay. Or just totally rebend it. I think what we got to do is cut off these tabs. Let's see if that'll push through. Try going the other way. I guess really what I should do is heat it up, and then we could uh, melt it back into the plastic. Maybe. Yeah, this isn't going to work, so let's do that. I like that idea. Let's first file this so that it's kind of rounded like these other ones, just so it slides in, right? I think that'll do. So, let's hold this with some pliers. Get it nice and hot. And we have to go kind of quick, because it's going to cool down, obviously. But once it kind of elongates the hole, it won't be such a big deal. And again, this is not the professional by-the-book repair. Well, really, the by-the-book repair would be replace ECU, but this may work, which is all we really care about. That should be plenty hot enough. Let's slide her down. Take two. Well, I don't know. Maybe we just cut flush. And see how it does. That soot is from reheating. But, looks decent. And then we'll just run a wire from this part down to the pad. And maybe, hopefully, be okay. And you can see how much copper goes to this pad. So you can tell, obviously, it's the main ground. Well, it's connected to the main ground and important for the main power. Okay, over to the soldering iron. All right, before I committed to that pin in there, I wanted to make sure it actually went in without pushing the pin out, and it does. So 
Now we will go down to the soldering iron. We're here at the electronics bench. So, super simple repair. All we're going to do is just put some solder on here. Let's see if we can remove this pin. Ugh, this stuff is rancid when it burns. The conformal coating, whatever you call it. Okay. Got a little bit of this random wire that I got laying around. And ordinarily I would try to suck the solder out of this hole with the solder sucker, but you see that went right in. And the other side's covered in that horrible rubber stuff, so that's why I didn't want to dip from that side. Add a little bit more solder. Good. Now we'll cut that to about there. Should actually measure this first. I don't know where my good side cutters went up. But I kind of need them. Guess I got scissors. I don't think it's going to work. Okay, apparently it worked. Alright, so now we're just going to strip back the insulation to this point with our random scissors that I found. Okay, or we'll just strip all the insulation away, that's fine too. Twist it together into a bunch. There we go. Need to trim that, obviously. But other than that, repair should be good. Success. Well, we don't know that yet, but let's go plug it in and see what happens. So let's temporarily plug this in. Maybe let's get the battery in first. Temporarily. Then we should have enough space to kind of just flap the ECU up top. Obviously we're missing that ground that it bolted to, but I think it'll be okay just to test. We'll find out, I suppose. Connect the battery up. Okay, there we go. Make sure this isn't, that should be good. Good news. Check engine light is on. Oh yeah. Let's go, all right. Let's turn around and see if we got spark. I'm willing to bet that we do. We do not. But that could also be due to something else. Let's think here real quick. Okay, I've made a development. First of all, I noticed the battery is way lower than I thought because apparently this bike has always on headlights. <laughs> And it's like a 10 amp hour battery. So obviously that'll run down quick when you're just cranking over a bunch. Um, also, we're getting intermittent spark. Uh, let's crank this over and you can see. At least we were. Maybe it's bad ground? Let's see. Uh, I need more hands. Let's see about that. Oh, I swear we were. Oh, come on. You're making me a liar. Of course, as soon as the camera comes on. Oh, I swear it was. It's so weird. Oh, there you go. So I'm wondering if our crank sensor needs repositioned. Because it's like kind of ish. Firing. I think the spec is a millimeter, so maybe we'll bend it to that. I'm gonna let it charge back up for a while, and then we'll come back out and see. That might have just been it. That was that corrosion. So I also hooked up my OBD2 reader, and that seems to be working fine. Obviously, it's throwing codes for the map sensor, 
air temp sensor and what, what are, uh, coolant temp sensor, that's what it was. One of the pins was also corroded away, the power pin on the OBD2 port. So right now I just have it shoved in so it's making contact. Might need to address that at some point. But I'm gonna let this charge up. We'll look at our crank sensor. And if we get okay spark, then I think we'll just throw it back together and see how it does. All right, so I tightened up the gap here on our crank sensor a little bit. The spec is 0.8 millimeters, which I think is a res revised spec. I think the factory spec was one millimeter, and then they put out a service bulletin for 0.8 millimeters. I misplaced my feeler gauges. I gotta figure out where they are, but I eyeballed it. And check this out. Looking pretty good, so I think at this point we basically just got to put it back together. So I'm going to clean up the surface here for our side cover, get all this RTV off. We'll re RTV it. I don't even, I don't think it's a gasket. Yeah, I think it's just RTV. Well, at least we're going to use RTV, but yeah, I think it's just RTV. So We'll get the side cover on, we'll get her filled up with the oil. I got a new oil filter and everything for it. Fill it up with coolant and I think she'll light right off, honestly. Oh yeah, we gotta, I'll put the um, ECM back together. But that's simple, just the four screws. It'd be good to spray it with some kind of conformal coating, but for now we are going to leave it as is. All right, I'm gonna clean, so do that real quick. Both surfaces are nice and clean, got them wiped down really good with break clean so I'm going to use the right stuff for this because it's the right stuff um, so I'll just put a thin bead over on the cover it'll slot on over the dowels put a couple bolts in let her cure up not a whole lot to it all right ready to get it on make sure I got full coverage here which I do crank sensor. It actually looks better to me than the, the new one, but at this point we are stuck. See we got a little bit of squeezage, which is good. Slip of a mess for me. Not so good. I think somebody may have broken more than one of these. I see a couple of replacements in our pile of hardware. Yeah, and now we're down to these, which look like hardware store bolts to me. I think we used a couple that don't belong where we put them, but... Yeah, these ones with the templed heads. So we'll have to figure out where those actually belong. But for now it's okay, just putting pressure on there. Don't like that. Alright, so we'll get these just a little bit more than snug call it good for now. We can come back and torque them. I don't know the exact spec for these. Alright, that should be good. Do a little bit of cleanup around here. Alright, let that sit for a little bit. Technically RTV, or RTV. Technically the right stuff is an immediate return to service for one minute. Really it's just a little thicker than normal RTV. So, we're not in a rush. We'll let her cure up a little bit before we pour some oil down. Make sure our clutch is working. Yep. So that's good. I don't know how much free play is normal there. But also don't know exactly where this ought to be screwed in. So what the... Think about that. I doubt it goes down here. Probably somewhere... Oh, right here I'm guessing. Oh, you can't see anything. I'm guessing it goes in this boss right there. Also still need to do what I think is a case bolt. Tighten that down. I'm just gonna go through and check all the hardware on here because obviously things have been loosened and not tightened back up, which happens when you're 
digging into stuff and never get back to it. Also, not entirely sure where the fuel or fuel filter, oil filter is. Look at that. Look around. Oh, easy. Right there on the bottom of the bike. Cool. All right. So we'll change that too before we put the oil in. Because why not? Now I think we're just going to button it back up. I'm going to put the case back on the ECU. Nothing exciting there. Put our battery back in and then see how she does. Okay, ECM is reassembled, so we need to get that in and then put our battery holder thing in. This is a little bit of a interesting one. I think I had to like tilt it like this. Not too bad, although just remembered I probably needed to put the connector on first. Okay, we'll put a little bit of non-conductive grease on here. Just over the ones that don't already have grease. Hook this on. How did I do this? Didn't I have to take it off to get the connector off? I swing I did. Maybe I was able to muscle it over or something. I'm going to say that's probably not the official procedure. But hey, it worked. Get our ground strap slash mounting bolt on. Probably looked like I was doing nothing there because this is a breaker bar, but I actually was. Getting the nut to spin and not spin on the back side. Okay, that should be good. Okay, battery back in. This probably should have tucked down in here. Maybe over here doesn't really matter too much. Not a huge deal. Okay, uh, let's get our plugs back in, I guess. Actually, while we're here, I'm gonna tighten down. I don't know if you can see. While we're here, get these mysterious loose bolts tightened up. We need a bigger bit. I'm guessing those guys loosened up because they thought maybe it held the alternator in. Now these are just torques, so they shouldn't be too terribly tight. So I'm just gonna snug them up to where I feel comfortable. Get a wobbler. That should be good. I think we'll wanna double check our alternator bolts too. Definitely missing at least one. I'll bring you guys in here in just a sec. So you can see we're missing the one for there. This was loose, so I tighten that up. And I think it's just those two, so let's dig through our pile of parts. I'm going to guess this one. Yep, it's the only one that looks like it'd work. Okay, that feels good. Look around for anything else missing. I think we're looking pretty good so far. All right, I'm happy. Spark plug time. I think I'm gonna throw a little bit of uh, Never Seize on there. They look kind of dry. And I know the case is aluminum, or magnesium. I don't know if the cylinder head is magnesium on this or not. Just let me know. I could just Google it, but what's the fun in that? I did put my hand over the uh, plug holes while we were cranking over once, and there was good compression all the cylinders. So. At least, you know, by the field test. Highly scientific, but there's something there. I think enough to run at the very least, and I highly doubt that's the problem we have here. This is feeling weird. Is that actually spinning or? That felt really weird. Hopefully, I'm not having thread issues. Put a serious damper. Well, there's no threads on the spark plugs, so that's good. Maybe because somebody already ruined them. Hard to tell. 
That would be irritating. Okay, that was a little unnerving, but it torqued by, you know, finger meter. I don't know, maybe there was just a little bit of crud in the threads and it wasn't quite bottomed out when I thought it was. But, yeah, so that's good. Whew, that would have really thrown a, a wrench in the plants. Stuff comes up. Yeah, so if that were stripped, what we'd have to do is helicoil the head or something. Well, not or something. We'd have to helicoil the head or time cert. Which you can do in situ. It would be quite the task with the deep plug wells on this. On a normal like V8, it's no big deal really. On this, you probably gotta pull the cylinder head. But we don't have to do that, so we don't have to think about that again. Get our coils on. Okay, let's grab all of our springs off of the throttle bodies here and put them back on the intake boots. Oop. Also, that came off. Pull this out of the way. Should be good otherwise. Oh. Looks like our air intake over here kind of broke, but no big deal, really. I think it's just the rubber boot, really, but it doesn't really matter. So these springs go over here. Looks like we've got a hose that connects to that. I'm guessing it's that uh, little hose we pulled out. Must be a crank breather or something to craft. So we'll cut it back. Awesome. Dropping hardware. Ooh, be careful with that. That does not have much meat left on it. It's a little easier to put back on when you're going onto the connector. So where this thing goes is to be determined. Question is, where did I lose this last bolt? It's getting our coolant hose on now. Okay, coolant time sensor. It's got these two air box bolts. The one missing one. I think the last thing we gotta really do is the fuel. All right, what I was saying is, we have our fuel uh, fittings here. They have O-rings that are kind of old, so I'm gonna see if I got new ones in stock. So that one's actually cut a little bit. So I'm gonna go through my hoard. I'm sure I got something. All right, I got a couple that are real close, so hopefully they're okay. We'll save the old ones just in case you gotta get a different size. Yeah, I think that'll work okay. I think we're good to just set the fuel tank in. We've got a bunch of connections to make. Oh, I was thinking I might dump it out, but if we dilute it, it'll be fine. All right, so we're gonna plug everything in. Guessing that's cinder. Fuel pump. That obviously does not go to this. Well, this goes down to the crankcase. Well, maybe that's the hose that came off the intake. I don't know. Now we play the game, which is the feed, which is not the feed. How the heck does this unlock? Oh, that's kind of cool. That's really cool, actually. Um, I think this is the top one. This is the bottom one. That's just a guess. Probably wrong. Alright, that should be enough to test it out, I think. Um, let's throw some fresh gas in it, I guess, and... Crank it over real quick. Oh, we gotta put our oil in it. Duh. 
That would have been bad. <laughs> okay, that ought to be good. Right, apparently the fill is three and a half liters. Alright, I think we are ready to fire it up. Doesn't have any coolant in it. But we'll only run it for a second, or a few seconds, if it starts. I don't hear the fuel pump run. That could be a problem. Yeah, so it looks like our fuel pump. He's not working. Yeah, so we're getting power to the fuel pump, but it's not running, which kind of to be expected with how old or how long it's set with old gas. So we'll be popping that out next. All right, let's pop this off real quick. Six millimeter. I don't know what this is. No, seven. Hopefully we don't tear this gasket. Okay. All right. It's not going to tear, that's for sure. Oh, good. It's like a rubber gasket. All right, finally got that fuel pump out. I think some unholy things were happening with that gas. Weird. Uh, you really don't want to find a new pump for this. Um, actually, here's another fuel pump I just replaced. That went bad. Probably a fairly standard pump, I would guess. You can get new ones online, but if we can kind of, you know, do the old whack-a-mole on this and bring it back to life, I'd be happy. Who knows, maybe we have to do the job again later, but if we can free it up for now, just make sure all's good on this thing before we put more money into it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hook up 12 volts to this, and then just tap on the pump with a hammer. Probably against all manufacturer recommendations, but that's okay. Don't know which is ground on this. I'll check the connector. Shove something in between those. Don't touch. I hear nothing going on. So let's start tapping. Ta-da! It's kind of starting to go. Tech insulation back on. Okay, let's um, let's do this. Take the pump off the holder, so we can get it on the bench and get a little bit more oomph. Say this fuel line has seen better days. Let's see if we can get this sock off without obliterating it. Maybe we can sneak it out. There we go. It's trying to. Backfeed it with something that might break down the gunk that's gonna, I'm guessing, clog up the veins or whatever. I don't know, what do you think? WD 40 or something? I've got a stupid idea. What if we hook it up to 24 volts? I mean, it's not like we're gonna ruin it. Might be what it needs to just break free. Kinda started going just a little bit, and then it stopped. Oh wait, that's off. I had it on a second ago. So the old pump's toast, no way around it really. It came back for a second, but then died again. Surprisingly, 
I looked up the part number on the pump and I bet you can't guess what shares a pump with this. It's an 05 to 2011 Honda Civic. So I went to the junkyard and there we go. 15 bucks later, got hopefully a good pump. I've got my batteries, so I didn't test it at the yard, but I'm sure it's fine. So we'll look at power real quick. Yep, sounds good. Let me grab the old pump and I can show you. So here's our old pump. You can see it's identical. Well, you can't really see it very well. There we go. Exactly the same. Only difference is the fuel socks a little bit different, but I think we'll just stick with the one that's already on there. So that's pretty sweet. I think the connector's even the same and everything. Let's take the pigtail I cut off and... Yeah, look at that. Same exact connector and everything. Who would have guessed? Crazy. We are going to need to deal with these fuel lines. For sure. They're pretty bad. But let's just snake this in for now. That'll even fit decent enough, maybe. I need to pull the rubber out. Yeah. Okay, throw our disintegrating rubber jacket back on. Okay, not going to tighten that up all the way yet because that fuel line is going to be a bit of a pain. Okay, I have this new section from a pump that I never, a new pump that I never used. So we'll just kind of guesstimate on the length here. Yeah, that ought to be okay. Get our <clears throat> spring clamps on, which spring clamps are kind of annoying, but they're actually good in this case because the last thing you want is a normal worm drive type clamp to loosen up inside your fuel tank and then you can actually have a leak on the hose so spring types are good because they give constant pressure though they do make it awfully difficult to slide this hose okay that ought to be good enough I think look at that these hoses just as a matter of course. It would be a good idea to replace the fuel filter, but we're not going to do it. You see, it is the original fuel filter. It's even dated 98. Oh, that was the wrong hose. Oops. Just enough. That worked out. Now this is the cheapest pump from Rock Auto Hose, which I've had fail before, so we'll see. Just kind of like turned into mush, basically. But a lot of times I also have good luck, so. That's why I have it left over is because I didn't use it on the, the car that I was replacing the pump on because the hose was in good shape. And I trust the OEM hose more than the cheapest pump on Rock Auto hose. I guess it just depends if the kids who are making the hose are having a good day or a bad day over in China. Alright, I'm tightening this up. And then I think we're off to the races. Get it back in the tank and hopefully fire it up. Okay, so there's a little bit of junk in the tank. Let's see if I can fish it out by hand. Hopefully my gloves don't have any holes in it, but otherwise my hands are gonna stink. Yeah, it's just a little bit of that weird rubber that had disintegrated. Hopefully our gasket is in good enough shape to reuse. This was really 
fiddly to get it out, so. I imagine getting it in is not going to be much easier. I had to basically bend the tank, and it splashed fuel everywhere. See? It's like an interference fit. Now for all of our bolts. I should have noted while I was in there which one of these was the feet. I guess I could look back at the footage. Because I'm pretty sure the return and the feet off of the fuel rail are pretty much identical. So they, they fit in either one. And if you get it backwards, obviously you're not going to get proper fueling. And it probably won't even start. I guess I also should have checked to make sure... Oh no, it was the same connectors. That's right. I was going to say that the polarity was the same on the pump, but it was the same pump. So. Alright, I'm going to get these snugged up and then we'll drop the tank back in. Before we put the tank in, I forgot we have this like, foam. High density foam cover that appears to go over down in here. I'm guessing for sound deadening purposes. So, might as well put that in. I'm guessing shoulder bolts of some kind. Maybe they're just missing. I'm thinking maybe it took like this type of bolt. I think these are the right bolts. I don't know what else they could go to. I'll show you what I was working on. Down in there. Bolt that cover down. There's two more bolt holes. There's one more bolt that looks like that. I think I'm just gonna leave it out because those two will hold it just fine, I think. Well, it definitely will hold it just fine. It's not gonna rattle. And I'm not positive those are the right bolts, so we can deal with that later once we know everything else works. So let's drop the tank in. There's a mystery plug here, I don't know what that goes to. But I guess the computer will throw a check engine light for it, so we should know. Your pump's running. Actually, before we fire it up, I figure we might as well put some coolant in it. And I'm now realizing, I think one of those tubes is for the overflow. Because there is an overflow tank. This tube... How does it reach it? There we go. Okay. Come on. Make sure there's some weird stuff in this. This is strange. Looks like stop leak, actually, now I'm looking at it. Oh no, never mind. It's the fiber reinforcement in the plastic kind of giving up. Not ideal, but it'll be okay. How much am I gonna spill? Should I get a funnel? Deep questions in life. Alright, let's see if it'll start up. Off for a second. Alright, so I swapped the fuel lines because I think I might have gotten the return and feed backwards. Let's see if that does anything. So it seems like the, the um, idle air control is not working or something. It sounds a little clacky. Yeah, 
hear that clacking? Yeah, I think this plug might go to the idle air control valve, which would make sense, so let's pop the tank back off and see. I guess we could also pull codes and see. Alright, let's pull the codes. Definitely suspect, because obviously it's dying without any throttle, so the idle air control valve is probably not working. It was a little clacky, so it was a little concerning, but we'll see. The oil light turned off. Okay, no fault codes, so that's not really helpful. I'm hoping we don't have to pull this back off to see. But we may have to. Which isn't a huge deal. Yeah, yes, let's link this yeah. Let's yank this off and see what we're dealing with here. Although I can't imagine it's only a two pin device. So maybe it's I think this is the map sensor over here. Which would kind of have the same. I wonder if this is a TPS sensor. No, it did fire up, so that's good. Yeah, our, our eight idle air control valve is hooked up. I'm not entirely sure what this goes to. Alright, so it seems to be running pretty good now. I don't know if the ECU just had to relearn the idle or whatever. That rattling, it sounds kind of like a timing chain. Alright, so we have a few issues to sort out, but it seems to be running okay. I think what we're going to end up doing is popping the side cover back off, check our chains. So it sounds like a chain rattle to me. But I think it should be okay to ride up and down the driveway. Fairly low RPM. So let's see how it drives, make sure Transmission works and whatnot. So we made a lot of progress. We got this thing running and driving after it had been sitting for quite a while. Definitely still got some things to sort out. Seems to be running pretty good, um, but something isn't quite right. It may just need to run some more. And then obviously that, the main thing is that kind of clattering, which seems maybe like timing chain. So I think next time we'll dig in, we'll pop the cam cover off, take a look, make sure everything's good there. Um, and hope it's not bottom end. We also gotta go through and clean up all the fairings, maybe do some plastic welding on that. Yeah, made good progress this time, and I'll see you on the next one.